All right, so we've got a little wall in projects. The Miata needs some small work done to it. The Subaru needs some work done to it. The Fummins build, I'm waiting on a parts truck. I'm trying to find a parts truck so we can start on that. So while we've got this little wall, timing kind of works out perfect. We're gonna start working on Ben's LS Miata. So it's kind of got everything ready. Um, as far as like, we have a lot of work to do basically with the amount of parts that we have. We have most of the stuff we need to put the car together. I'm really excited about this and I'm really eager to get it done because I mean, it's rare enough to see a Miata ripping and tandeming out of vents. Way rarer to see a V8 LS Miata drifting period. So to have two of them drifting tandeming is gonna be so sick. And Ben's like me where, you know, I have, I've had a bunch of different cars. He's mainly only had, or pretty much only had Miatas as drift cars. But in the sense of like, like the highest horsepower car I had before my Miata was my VET, which is like 310 wheel horsepower and a 3,200 pound car. Um, so going from that to a car making almost 400, weighing 23, 2,400 pounds, like, I mean, it was like life changing, you know, being able to finally rip in fourth gear and have all this power. And I'm really excited for him to have that because he's never had it. So it, it, I'm sure he'll be just as excited and happy as I am when, when it's done and it's ripping. I think he's gonna love it. So I really wanna get it done, moral of the story. So basically what we need to do to put the engine in is cut these corners out. So these get in the way of the V8. Um, uh, cut the corners out. And then we have oh to yeah. This, and then we have to cut all this out. I forgot about that. It all out. My swap's way easier. I don't have to cut the, my engine sits like an inch further forward and I don't have to cut the, I didn't have to cut the bell housing. So I forgot about that part. Did you take the stuff out of here? I just got to pull the carpet. Yeah, you got to pull that insulation. That'll just set on fire. So yeah, and then once we get the cuts done, we can test fit the engine and so on and so forth. So we're gonna try to get as much done as we can on this right now. Except we do have to wait for this fuel to evaporate because uh, Ben sabotaged the project and spilled a bunch of fuel on the ground right under where we're gonna plasma yeah, cut. Just don't like working on cars. Apparently not. 30 minutes later. Right? Is that one of those like plastic things? Yeah. Those things are annoying. Oh yeah. Congratulations, dude. Big step forward, man. Right, car's almost done now. Almost done, dude. Almost finished. You should set that right on top of the gasoline um, so it'll catch the sparks from the plasma cutter. Okay, you think it'll work? I think that's a great idea. I mean, it is like rubber. So before we start our cutting, we gotta get these side braces out here. Is what we'll cut that and then weld them back in. Basically, basically, after you cut the trans yeah, tunnel? Yeah, okay. basically. If this we need to order a spot weld drill bit. Cause yeah. I'm sure we will use it. Still haven't decided if I wanna make a cart for this plasma cutter or not. It's so small and white, but I mean, I wanted to put it on this just so we can roll it to the different spots that we're working on. Need to hook the airline up to it. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we could cut the inside stuff out while the fuel's drying. It's kind of sketchy still. <laughs> All right, well, my camera glitched out, so I don't know if you guys got any of that, but I might have a couple little spots left to cut. It's just hard to see the underneath ones. So much easier than using a cutoff wheel. This thing's pretty sick for just over 200 bucks. Time to do the other side. All right, we got both corners out. So now we need to cut basically a slit and a slit so we can bend this up like an inch for bell housing clearance corners. And then I guess the whole trans tunnel, that part I don't know about. Yeah, I got pictures of what it is, but it's basically, it looks like a slit all the way up the trans tunnel so you can widen it because you have to get like 20 inches at the top and 21 inches at the bottom or something okay. like that. And then there's like another little slit we have to make to hammer in to have room for fuel lines and all that stuff. Okay, we got the corners cut to be, or marked to be cut out. Basically, we're just staying in line with the frame rail all the way back.
Yeah, all the seam sealer. Ugh, they wear a respirator. Taylor Ray teaching me how to fabricate, you know? Wearing proper safety gear. Well, everyone commented and made fun of me for wearing my welding helmet. They're like, you just need sunglasses and it's way easier to see. I was talking about flip flops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Getting pro, dude. Heckin' pro. It looked pretty stunner with those stunner shades. But, uh, so much better than doing this with a grinder and a sawzall. You're not. You can cut it from the top, just try to angle it out a little bit. It'd be fun. not going. You have to be over metal for it to start, so you're just over the gap. That should be good. And then you still got to cut out, too. Yeah, like here. Corners are cut out. As you can see, that makes a lot more room in here. Mainly it's, you know, for, well, honestly, the back of the cylinder head, pretty much everything. The engine would never fit in here if you didn't cut those out. So I cut mine, I think I stopped about here. I should have cut it that far because it, it's kind of in the way sometimes, but sweet. So uh, we'll need to figure out some cover plates for that. I guess you can just leave it open. Oh, I see what those are for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Those came in my Monster Miata swap kit and I didn't realize I had them and I made my own plates for there. Okay, cool. Uh, so we need to cut the uh, bell housing slits in the tunnel. Try to figure out where to cut. And then you want to cut this, I'm assuming. Yeah, we might as well. Yeah, cut in full. I'll cut this, you cut yeah. that. I, I hate wearing shorts doing metal work. Yeah. But I don't want to go put pants on and get them sweaty now. Yeah, and flip flops, dude. You're the well, might as well be sure. working at a Chinese sweatshop, dude. I mean, I get paid like I do. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, so the slit all the way down the side of the trans tunnel is cut in. See where you cut basically from here all the way down to here because you have to widen this part of the trans tunnel. So we'll hammer that out to spread it out basically top to bottom and then he cut these two slits in here. So we'll hammer that up to make room for the top of the bell housing. And then I think the last thing we need to cut is cut this out. Basically as like the vet intake that I run on my car, it, it comes down and if this is here, it sticks up too high. So basically you put a piece of DOM or square tube or something there instead. It also gives you a lot more room for mounting oil coolers, more air to the radiator, and it's probably stronger anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out real quick. Not bad. 
Not bad. All right, just gotta clean that up and then uh, we can weld some plates there and weld our tube in the middle. cut out makes that a lot easier. Hi. Yeah, I got this. It's amazing how white the front of this car is with uh without anything. Yeah. What's crazy is you put like anything in them and it becomes so heavy. There you go. Good on this side. Good on that side? As far as the studs go, but you're hitting like hardcore. This would have to be like here. Maybe it's only 20 at the bottom. Yeah, because no. that's 16 and that's supposed to go to 20. And then at the bottom there, it's supposed to be 20 as well. What is it caught on? It's not all. Because we should definitely try to get the back bolts in. So it's it's over the studs, but it's a little bit caught up on the threads of the studs. And you know, I want to get it all the way up and all the bolts in if possible before we call it good on all of the clearancing. Because when I did mine, I bolted those two bolts in the studs and I was like sweet it's good and I like painted the bay and did all this other stuff and then it didn't fit as far as getting the rear bolts in and then it was like hours of taking it in and out so that was a little too much I think I think you're buying in the other way now uh -huh. maybe can you go to can you get to the bell housing Well, that's, I mean, that's good. I just wanted to make sure it actually fit everywhere before you like started welding shit up and then I had to cut it back apart or something. <laughs> that would suck. Suck bad. But... Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with their measurement. I don't, like, I don't understand that. Cause that's like a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like too much. Yeah. I thought that was my, like gas. Pack. Yeah, I was just looking at that. That's a mother LS in a Miata. Woo! -hoo! Throwback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true because I was there when you we put yeah your and that's, a, that's exactly what you said I remember it word for word all right so now we just gotta wall the engines in throw some pistons in here put the heads on and uh, go do a burnout yeah dude we're almost ready dude. we're ready to we're rip by the weekend have ready for the compound for your birthday yeah dude sweet let's do it my suggestion would be we bolt up the subframe drop this thing out and test fit just put heads on and just test fit the headers We just need two bolts. This is just for test fitting purposes. Okay. Are the jack stands still good? So we can drop. We can drop this thing out. Look at that. That's cooler, because now it's like in in. You know, it's bolted up. It looks like we're gonna have to put these headers in from the bottom. Like a cross between a long tube and a manifold. I feel like a mid link. Yeah, here, let me get a bolt, couple bolts so we can bolt it on real quick. I gotta, oh God, impressive. I gotta take that plate off. 
That looks like a truck intake like that. It does. Doesn't it? Oh, it needs to come forward some so you can get past this bit. There you go. Headers, heads, blocks in, everything fits. Those look way cooler from up top. You can't tell that they're not like full long tubes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just like shiny. It all seems to fit real well under there. Yeah, no, it looks like, like starting the exhaust is in a good spot. They don't hang too far below the subframe, only like an inch. That's solid, I like this. Ta-da! I don't know why it doesn't fit. Oh, would you look at that, guys? It looks a lot more complete than it really is, but it's always at least satisfying to make it seem complete. You know, at it least get like a visual complete. image. That's like a motor. It's got headers. It's got an intake. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. It's, like it's got a steering rack. A little bit of the rotating assembly. Missing some uh, front front end parts, some other stuff. But I mean, hey, it's in there. On a scale of one to height, how do you feel? I'd say a solid seven. Seven out of height? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's definitely like a huge nice step. Nice to see, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, the, the, the headers are really good. Fit. Yeah, they fit really good. The steering shaft is gonna clear. Hopefully. You know, was a major I think it will. Because yeah. looking at it from the bottom, it looks like it will. Yeah, it looks like it's got room with that dent there. Yeah, the rear and stuff's like there. It split my leg open the other day. We gotta weld something on it, which will be easy to weld, and then assemble it, and then slap that in. So that's real easy. And then trans mount. You gotta put a 99 tank in it. Oh yeah, yeah, because it has the quick connect outlets. All right, well that pretty much wraps us up with Ben's car for the day. I mean, we got the whole engine bay and trans tunnel clearance. Everything fits perfect. The whole engine, the subframes bolted up in every spot. The headers fit, like everything fits. That is awesome. That is a freaking huge, huge step. It honestly doesn't feel like a big step because it was so easy because we basically already knew what we had to do from doing my car. So it just kind of, we kind of flew right through it. So I'm hoping that the rest of the project goes that way, you know, having done everything for the most part, you know, some things are going to be different on this car, but we've done most of the things, or at least I have once over, maybe twice over. So doing it this time, just, I feel like we're going to be, be able to fly through it. So hope we can get this thing knocked out soon and on track. But speaking of LS Miatas, I've got projects of my own to work on. Just a couple little things I want to knock out before the day is over. So I've got this kill switch. So this is a nice big marine grade one. I don't like the little tag key flag whatever ones because everyone I know who runs them has issues with them. Basically, there's like a little nub that makes contact and it'll get loose and your car will shut off and I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to use this as my kill switch. It's nice and covered and seems very heavy duty. Very nice. Yeah, 900 amps for 30 seconds. So it's a ripper. It should be good. And then also I've got some six gauge wire. I'm going to redo my alternator wire. It got a little messed up at grid life. It got burnt and it's been eight or 10 gauge the entire time I've had the car built. And if I do go electric power steering, I will need, you know, there'll be way more demand on the alternator. I'll need more current to be going back to the battery. So I want to upgrade that to a six gauge wire and then hood shocks. So this is another thing. I have just a pole that I stick in there and I'm tired of doing that. So I want to put these hood shocks on. So let's, let's try to tackle that first. All right guys, so my plan is to basically drill a hole through here, use this stud there, and then either modify that bracket or make my own bracket for up here, mount it right about there. I think if I drill the hole first, then I can change where I position this. All right, so let's drill a hole. I don't know, it hadn't shipped yet when I checked. So let's test that out. So the one thing I'm struggling with here, granted it's just a test fit, but it keeps it keeps basically hitting. 
like where it would mount there hits the body there. All right, so I'm gonna try to use this bracket thing that I bought. So this is meant for like a normal shock that you would find, you know, anywhere where you would pop it on. Um, but those ones have studs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to cut this stud deal off and then see if we can make this work. Okay, so now we just need to redraw our hole further down. So we need to go probably right about here. All right, so I'm gonna tighten this down, send the self-tapper in, check and see if it shuts. So with this bracket, we're ending up with this gap because the bracket itself is hitting the inside right there. I mean, I guess, no, because then we'd be on the hinge. Yeah, so I think I just need to make like a shorter bracket. I don't know if that would work either. I don't know, I gotta figure this out. Okay, so it looks like I'm gonna have to make my own bracket. This bracket is just too tall. I don't wanna rush this, so I'm gonna move on to the breaker switch in the back. I'm getting, getting a little antsy, I don't wanna rush through it. So get some more work done and then I'll feel better about taking a little extra time on that. All right, so I need to figure out exactly how I'm supposed to mount this thing. Does it snap together? Okay, it snaps together. So we should be able to just screw it in and then snap this in. Oh, and then we can snap it in any orientation we want. I really like this though, like, it's such a solid connect and disconnect. It feels very robust. It's kind of cool too, because you can surface mount it too. Like we could mount it, you know, to a piece of metal like this and then run our wires to the backside. I'll put the link to this below um, to Amazon. I got it on Amazon. I got all this on Amazon. This wire seems pretty solid for the price. And then I got these on Amazon a while ago. I just bought like 25 back. Okay, let's try to get this thing mounted up. So as you can see, I had just a standard A and L fuse here and uh, I blew it during an event and I just bypassed it. <laughs> it just kind of left it like that. I just make sure to disconnect the battery when the car is parked and I'm not using it. So I'm gonna try to mount that switch deal here or maybe I'll mount it right down here. That might be a little easier. I don't know, let's get these wires off and get this off first. Uh, yeah, so the other problem I have with this thing is basically, you know, your fuse goes in here and there's a, a cap that goes over it and it's supposed to protect your terminals, but both the, that wire and then having these two wires coming out, they were just too big and the cap would never sit down on there. So it always fall and then you've got exposed terminals and then I tried taping it up and it was just a mess. So we we'll had to get rid of this. I'm gonna mount it right here on the bottom because mounting it up here just kind of sucks because this has the humps in it. It would be nice to like flush mount it right here and put the wires up through there, but for now this will work. And uh, it's gonna be cool because I can run the wires in any direction. So I'm gonna run these in from the front here to their side and then the power from the battery into the side here. I think that'll work out really well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get it mounted and then start running the wires in. Okay, well, I got my switch mounted. I mean, it works fine. On, off, cool, okay. This setup is not gonna work. Uh, just basically, this is always gets in the way. And even if I made my own bracket like I thought I was gonna do, it still wouldn't be enough. Basically, the rod needs to mount, instead of mounting you know, below this piece, it needs to mount like up here on the side. So basically, I'd need to make like a custom bracket that came over, came up, and then had the nub sticking off, use a normal shock, um, to keep it tight enough to shut the hood. So I might just see if, uh, <laughs> like honestly, just be easier to buy a set that somebody makes that's like bolt-on. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm not gonna worry too much about that now. Guess the last thing I need to do is throw this thing on the lift and uh, get an alternator cable made. And this skid plate has definitely done its job. Oh no, it's about to break. I'm gonna have to fix that. I, uh, at OSW, like you finish the run, the layout they normally have, and then you take a left onto the exit road. Well, the outside of the exit road is like, I don't know, an eight inch drop off. And at night, it's hard to see exactly where the exit road is. And I dropped the tire off. Oh. So 
hard to see that the yeah. little road at night. And this is what takes the hit. I've got that brace there, it'll probably be all right. I'll have to patch that up though at some point, but this thing's definitely taking the hits for me instead of everything under here taking the hits. So we do have to pop it off just to make it easier to get to the alternator wire. Try to figure out better routing when we put the new wire in. We got some oil permeating from somewhere. I'm not sure where. Maybe a rear main seal? It's a little wet here. It's the LS thing, they just leak. It's crazy how much of a difference just those four tube lights make. So we finally decided on lights. Those are 2200 lumens each. They're four foot. So we found some that were eight foot. We could buy a 25 pack. So they're 7,000 lumens each, and we bought two 25 packs. So that means right now, I think the shop's like 60,000 lumens or something like that, like 69,000 or whatever, because that one's out, but we do have those. It's gonna be 350,000. <laughs> it might be a little overkill. Not 100% sure yet, but we'll find out. I, it'll be really nice to have a bunch of light in here. Um, I'm really excited. They should be here any day now. We'll start putting them up. So anyway, random tidbit. Uh, okay, I gotta pull this alternator wire out. Dilly dallying. It's one of those things, when it, when it starts getting dark, I used to work mostly when it was dark because I'd get off work, you know, and then I'd, I'd get to work and work till midnight or whatever. Now, as soon as it gets dark, I'm like, all right, that's it, day's over. I'm over it, let's go inside. <laughs> Yeah, so at Grid Life, right here, the wire had gotten rubbed through against the starter trigger wire. So it started triggering the starter on its own. And then here is where it melted and I had to cut it and splice it back together with a splice that a friend of mine had, luckily, need to replace this. So we're gonna use this eight gauge, six gauge wire. So I don't know, I don't know exactly what this is. I think it's eight gauge based on like the thickness of the wire. The sleeve isn't very thick. It's definitely thicker than 10 gauge. I think it's eight gauge, might be 10 gauge, I don't know. Regardless, it's getting replaced, so. I have a feeling these aren't gonna cut it. <laughs> yeah, it won't even fit. Need some shrink tube. Decently big stuff. Should work. Okay, so by far the easiest way to solder these copper lugs on is to heat them up and let the solder flow right into them. We're gonna heat up our pliers in the process, but these are a piece of junk, so I don't care. Let that cool down. See the wire got a little toasty here. It's kind of inevitable, but try not to. All right, there's our finished end, all nice and heat shrunk. I used two layers just because, I don't know, I worry about this stuff shorting out. So I was trying to kind of just keep it covered in this area where it might have a bend or something. So we just need to figure out how long to make it. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little longer than the last one because I know the last one was a little too short.
All right, we'll let that cool off, throw some heat shrink over it, and uh, throw it in the car. Looks nice, though. Freaking beefy alternator cable. Might be a little trickier to route than the other one was, but we'll give it a shot. I think I'm gonna run down to the alternator first. See if I can route it over to the starter easily from there. No. Cooperate. There's not a lot of room for my hand over here. Ow. All right, well, we've got that attached at the starter. I guess you can't really see it, but it goes up. Kind of keeps itself nice and tight away from the exhaust. And then up there. And then comes down to the alternator here. I need to pull some of this slack out. But other than that, it's a little bit of a tight bend. She is good to go. Just gotta tuck it up up top and we're done. All right, our wires ran. on the voltage. I kind of like this dash. Um, this is a pretty good dash for me if I just change the fuel to speed. Oh, here we clean it up all up on me. All right, so all the little stuff is done. We still got more stuff to do to this car as always. Got some cool plans for it, some things we're gonna try. Um, but for now, that's gonna be it. Really glad we got started on Ben's car, made some good progress there. Excited for the lighting upgrade. Lots to do as always, but for now, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys next time, goodbye.